one of the strongest generals you can use in Historic Brawl right now. And you've probably seen it before, but if you can get the Prismatic Bridge out at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker, put it onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So essentially we're going to cheat into play some crazily big creatures and planeswalkers. And you've probably seen that I've got some big baddies like Ulamog, Jingataxius, and there's a bit of a Praetor theme, so I've got Vorinclex, and we also have Alishnon. And also we have the new Vorinclex as well, to double the amount of counters we get on our Planeswalkers. So essentially, if you can resolve an Essica, it's the game is going to definitely look to be in your favour. It's unlikely that we will cast the creature side of this for three mana. You get a 1-4 that taps for any colour and gives other legendaries Vigilance and tap for one colour. So yeah, that side's rarely used. And uh, yeah, if you're looking to build something like this, just be aware that it would probably cost a lot of uh, wild cards. Uh, the mana base is pretty rough in that you're going to have to have a lot of the shock lands and a lot of the temples to try and fix your mana to get to 5 mana as soon as you can. You can alleviate this pressure by using a lot of cheap rocks and mana ramp spells. So you've got stuff like Cold Steel Heart, Arcane Signet, Explore and Growth Spiral to get you to 5 mana. But yeah, I think you get the gist of the deck by now. You want to get Essica as Prismatic Bridge side out and then get huge creatures into play. So let's see what kind of shenanigans we can get up today in uh, some historic brawl matchups. But yeah, if you like the look of this deck, don't forget to press the like button. And if you value my deck techs and uh, the gameplay videos you've been watching, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And yeah, it really supports the channel. So yeah, let's move on to some games. Okay, so we're facing against a Winota deck, so they're going to be very aggressive, and our hand is incredibly slow. Um, the opponent's going first as well, which is not good. We don't have any interaction early games, so I think we're going to have to mulligan this hand. And this is slightly better, if not just for the swords, so we have a way to exile the Winota. So, yeah, we're going to definitely keep this hand. And we have the mana to play Opt, and then we also have the mana to play Swords. So when you play Essica, I think the weighting of the matchups mean that I'm going to be facing a lot more harder opponents, so we have to be very aware of that. So Wrath of God, also another good card versus the Swarm decks. So they're going to get turn 3 Winota, which is really bad for us, so now we have to play the, the untapped planes, otherwise they're going to be able to hit us really hard here. Okay, so they choose to not cast the Winota, interestingly. So they're being a bit more reserved. But if they do cast up next turn, then that basically means they win the game, I think. So we're looking for more lands here. Yeah, Winota is definitely a bit of a pain. But we are playing a very strong deck ourselves, so I can't really complain there. Okay, so we do get a untapped land, and then we can Chromatic Lantern, which means we still have the white mana open for Swords to Plowshares. So, yeah, instant speed removal is vital versus these types of decks. So here she is, and then before combat, always make sure to kill her, otherwise you're going to die, essentially. That would have turned 4 damage into 20-ish damage. Um, so they only have 4 mana now, which means they can't cast her again until they get 6. So this is where we want to go Wrath of God to finish their board. And then we play another land. And then hopefully next turn we can get the Prismatic Bridge out and try to stabilise. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, that's Temple. We probably want... Okay, so it's not a land or a creature, so... Yeah, we'll just go for a Prismatic Bridge and hope for the best. They could have removal for it, but... Sometimes you have to put all your eggs in one basket. So land means Winota, and they get one trigger with Clarion Spirit. Let's just hope it's not something like a Kenrith. Angler from Marauders. Okay, that's uh, definitely a scary one. So that's a uh, sort of source you control with deal damage. It deals double that damage. So we just got taken out to six there, which is pretty devastating. And I think we have to destroy... The, let's see, so we can destroy the Angloth Marauders because that's double damage, so that would definitely kill us. Looks and then I think, yeah, we have to go for Ugin and then destroy Winota. When you understand reality, 
Okay, so hopefully they don't have anything with haste, or we're going to take... Uh, well, it could be lethal if they have something with haste. But we're going to have to try and stabilise here with the prismatic bridge. The Anglos Marauders was definitely a scary one there. So luckily we still have Ugin. So Ugin makes blockers with its plus one. Okay, so it's a new card from Innistrad. Midnight Hunt. What have we got this time? So we've got a shield root. That'll be nice to get rid of some of the creatures. So Ugin makes my colourless spells cost two less. So what should we do? So play a temple. Any creatures in the graveyard? No creatures. An Elish Norm would be incredibly good right now. Three, four, five, six. And what to do? Well, we definitely want to create a blocker. Truth lies beyond vision. And how much is that? Two. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to play the other Ugin here. And then we can minus... Yeah, obviously that's uh, two Ugin is a bit much. But yeah, that was a pretty cool combat there. Moving on to the next game. So we're facing off against an opponent's Essica, and they're going to go first, which is never a good sign. We do have a way to ramp, and we do have a way to kill their bridge. So yeah, let's see how this goes. This could end badly. Okay, so try and play all the tap lands, which are really useful for fixing your mana. Faithless looting is pretty good here. Let's just get rid of some of our bigger drops. So getting rid of the... I think we're going to get rid of Koma and Varan Collects, just because they're the most expensive spells. We do have a few ways to resurrect creatures, so if we do happen to get one of those out, that would be pretty handy. So they're going to get their bridge out in the following turn, which is bad for us. However, we can cultivate, which ensures we can Elspeth Conquer's death. So let's get out a swamp. What do we need for casualties? I think we get two swamps here. Make sure we can get casualties out. If we can cast the casualties of war, it's going to be pretty good. So they missed the land drop. And they do have blue, so they could have their own counter spell. Don't really want to go into counter spells. So let's start with the treasure map. Let's see if the game hesitates. So they have some kind of response. Okay, and then let's get the maze mine tome out as well. So we kind of want the opponent to tap out before we get our um, Essica here. Okay, so it looks like they're searching for their next mana. So they're going for blue, which means they've got enough to cast the Prismatic Bridge in their next turn. Okie dokie. And they still can't cast it, which is lucky for us. I guess this is a good time to activate Treasure Map. Try to get a land. Okay, so we get temple. That's good. Gives us a doom blade. So if they do have a counter spell, it's not the end of the world. But yeah, um, we don't actually have the right mana anyway to cast Essica. So we might as well just pass the turn. So what do we need? White, blue, black, red, green. Okay, so we will have the right mana next turn. So again, the opponent's being very reserved here, so let's activate Treasure Map. Nazal's pretty good, can't be counted, so we'll definitely keep that. And we might as well use Growth Spiral to draw a card, and potentially play a land. Okay, so let's play a Mountain, and then we can do a number of things, really. Let's start with the Nazal, because I can't counter that. And they do try and kill it. Um, we could flicker it, but the cards in my hand are pretty good, so I don't really want to do that yet. Okay, so the Nazal sticks around, which is pretty decent. If we can untap with Nazal on the field, this will be a great way to finish them off in a few hits. 
So if you've not seen Nazar, whenever the opponent um, casts a non creature spell, you draw a card. Already a fantastic line of text. But you can also discard three cards to exile Nazar, and then it returns to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So the opponent tries to murder this or board wipe. You can protect it from these things, and then it comes back later. Okay, and the opponent decides to concede there because the Nazar, I guess, is a bit too strong. Uh, yeah, moving on to the next game. Okay, so up against a uh, Winota deck, so they're going to be super aggressive, and we have ways to stop the aggression with a couple of discard spells and a shieldred, so happy to keep this hand and see how we fare. Let's be aggressive and let's start off with a Thoughtseize. Try to slow them down a bit. So what do we have? Turn 1 plays? There are only turn 1 plays. So I guess we could go for... Yeah, go for Raise the Alarm, I think, because that gives them two creatures. And then next turn we can Inquisition to get rid of another... Okay, apparently that's uh, enough to make the opponent concede, so moving on to the next game. Okay, and we finally come across a unique deck to fight against, and it's a Yorvo deck, which will be nice. Hopefully the opponent does not concede. Decent starting hand. So Yorvo is a big green beta deck. It's basically a 4-4, and whenever they cast a green creature comes into play, it gives it another counter. So yeah, it's a nice, uh, a nice aggressive creature there. So a word of note, if you play Essica or God of the Tree, just be wary that many opponents will probably concede once they see you even matched up with them. So bear that in mind. If you're looking to rank up, then I guess it's a good way to get XP. But yeah, it's not the most uh, friendly general, so I kind of made this deck just to see what all the fuss was about. And um, yeah, it's pretty powerful if you can resolve her. So the following turn we can get out the Heraldic Banner. And then that's one step closer to getting the Prismatic Bridge. So the opponent might have ways to destroy enchantments, so you have to be wary of that. So I think we choose White because we have a Wrath of God that we want to cast eventually. So to alleviate the fact that we've got massive creatures in our hand here. There's a few ways in the deck to draw and then discard cards, like Faithless Looting, and then later on you can resurrect them with black resurrection spells. So that's a nice way of ensuring that you your hand is, doesn't just get flooded with uncastable spells. So speak of the devil, there's the unburial rites. And I think now we just go for the Firemind Vessel. So the following turn, if they cast their Yorvo or their Lovestruck Beast, we can destroy all of them, which would be really good. So we do have an Ix Bloom Ancient as well, so whenever you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana. So that's a crazy card, if you can get that out and keep it alive long enough. Okay, so they're playing quite a modest deck here. Just a lot of beaters. They can tap for three mana now, using the Circle of Dreams Druid. So they can cast their General or the Lovestruck Beast. So here comes Yorvo. So now it's very tempting to use Wrath of God in our turn. Uh, what's this? Snow creature. So yeah, I don't want to be greedy. I think we just want to clear the field. And then next turn we can start laying down a few more threats. Especially when you consider that their Circle of Dreams to Druid was going to tap for at least 4 mana that turn. So, who knows what they would have played after that. Here comes Yorvo again. So you can cast any number of things here. I think it's... Um... Yeah, it's good for the Meteor Golem just to get rid of the single target here. Uh, this way we've got a bit of a blocker in case they have a creature with haste. Frogamoth Trample Haste, okay. So it does get larger when it hits us, but we're not really that bothered. <clears throat> so it'll exile the Wrath of God. Escape Shift would be nice if we had more lands. But yeah, I think let's go for the next Blue Mansion, and then if we untap with that in our next turn, we basically get to go off. 
with uh, three times as much mana as we had the previous turn. Might see a concession from the opponent if they can't kill it. I think I would certainly concede at this situation if I couldn't kill the next Blue Ancient. Tell me in the comments below how much mana you've ever got from a Nyx Blue Mansion. Ooh, okay, so they managed to destroy it there with the generator. Cool, fair enough. So the game goes on there. That does mean we get to play more fancy spells. So yeah, I think uh, yeah we don't want to mess around anymore. Let's destroy the creature under one of their lands. Send them back to the Stone Age. And yeah, let's get a bit more aggressive now. So the risk of having artifacts and traumas versus green is green can literally deal with every single threat that we pose, so we have to be cautious not to let them have too much advantage. Taking the turn off to draw three, fair enough. And more ramp. So we finally get a land. I think yeah, let's get the prismatic bridge out. And leave up the blocker. So if they spend a turn just drawing the bridge, that's not the end of the world. We do have access to a lot of powerful spells still. So Vivian Reed comes down. She's going to destroy the prismatic bridge using the minus. That okay, that's annoying. Looks like this is going to be a longer battle than I anticipated. Okay, so I think now we go for the Ugin. And we destroy the Vivian Reed. I've seen worse. And let's explore to see if we can play another land. Yep, which we luckily do get. So at the minute we're just trading one for one. Let's see how long we can continue this fight. Green is actually quite scary these days because Wizards decided to give Green access to every ability under the sun so they can draw, they can ramp, and they have incredible finishes. So they definitely probably are the strongest colour in Magic these days. We do have a pretty good board presence, but again, they could play something like the Great Henge and then more creatures eventually to drown us in card advantage, so just have to get lucky now and see if Ugin can survive. We do have a nice trick with Scape Shift. If we do get another land, we can sacrifice most of our lands to get out. Um, Field, the uh, Field of the Dead, which means we get loads of zombies as well. Yeah, so smart move from the opponent there. If they put a counter onto the Lano or Elves, then the Love Struck Beast couldn't attack. Okay, so we do get a land. Optic with Ugin. I'm, I'm concerned that the opponent has more ways to destroy artifacts or enchantments, so at the minute it's probably tempting to. Yeah, you know what? Let's um, tap all the lands by pressing QQ, and that gives you all the lands you could want. And we'll use Scape Shift here. So you get rid of everything but the World Tree. And then we get six lands. So this is a nice little trick. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure you've got Field of the Dead and your best tap lands, I guess. If we go for temples here, we can have a few scry triggers as well. So as you can see, the Field of the Dead sees every land trigger. So you get that many zombies. And Grow from the Ashes is actually weirdly good as well with the Field of the Dead the following turn. So unfortunately we do have a lot of mana we can't use which is quite infuriating. Um, but yeah, oh well, we did get a lot of zombies out of that. So next turn we can Grow from the Ashes for 5 mana. This gives us 2 more lands and 2 more zombies.
we unfortunately don't have any good creatures in the graveyard because they exiled it with Frogamoth, so we can't even resurrect anything with Unburial Rites. So here comes an attack from the Lovestruck Beast. So they could have some combat tricks here. But we have to try. Okay, so it looks like a straight up trade. Fair enough, and we do get a land to hand, which is pretty important. So the game goes long, Field of the Dead we definitely have on our side to push us up and over. Probably a bit too deep in the think tank. I do wonder sometimes what opponents are doing when they're trolling me or uh, running the timer down. I mean, yeah, some moves do take a long time to orchestrate, but there comes a limit, I think. Primal Command, interesting. So they're putting the ramp spell on top. That's a very curious move. I'm going to draw it in my next turn, and Ugin makes me cast it for two less cards. Okay, so Voronklex is primed for the following turn. Yeah, very strange move there. So I think we go for... Okay, so we can't cast it yet. So I have to play that Shockland. And yeah, that's past the turn. The opponent's going for a lot of counters here on their attack, so Vron Collector will put two counters on each creature as it attacks. So it's definitely going to be a scary amount of damage coming through here. It will take up their whole turn to cast their Vron Collector. So because of the wording on Vorinclex, it means if we do get a Planeswalker with a Prismatic Bridge, it won't come in with as many loyalty counters on it, which is quite annoying. Wow, so they have a yet another way to kill our artifacts and enchantments. Okay, that's definitely a very strong card there. Just removes a counter to destroy artifact or enchantments. So that's definitely going to have to go eventually. He's not itself. So I think we go for the bowlers here. And yeah, we're definitely going to want to kill the Steel Bane Hydra. Apparently the opponent's entire deck is just made of artifact and enchantment removal. Okay, so it's gonna, that's getting quite annoying. And... So how many ways have they used here? So they've used one, two, three, four spells that have got rid of our artifacts and enchantments. So they're definitely prepared for this matchup. But we're definitely going to make the opponent work for their victory if they do get it. Arugin is able to destroy a permanent that's one or more colours in our following turn if it survives. So the opponent might have to choose here which planeswalker they try and kill. We do have a lot of blockers totaling 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15 toughness. And we do have an Elish Norn hidden underneath this Spirit Manifest token. So here comes Ronclex. Okay. Will they attack? If they do, I'll certainly block. If Bola survives, I'm tempted to make each opponent exile two costs from their hand, which could definitely help us in this fight. So here comes the attack. Oren goes to a 5 5. So this is an easy block for us. We definitely want to take out as many of these as possible. I'm not sure if that was the right move doing that, to be honest, but I guess it's a desperation move, trying to get rid of our planeswalkers. Kind of makes sense, but now the Vronclex can't stop our loyalty going up, which, yeah, I think that was probably the final uh, nail in the coffin attacking like that. Especially now we're going to disintegrate their hand, punish them for... Okay, so they've got a counter strategy it seems. They could have another artifact or enchantment removal, so this is probably the time to go for Professor Onyx. 
and then punish them again by making them sack the amulets to be like the final move needed. Cool. So yeah, don't forget guys, if you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you've got something from this video, like some tips or some helpful advice on how to build your Asuka deck, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get more cool videos like this that may help you in the future. And yeah, until then, have a good day, and uh, see you guys later. Bye.